Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new mini PC that comes in with a super small form factor known as the M6. Now I've actually seen this rebranded by a few different companies out there and I've seen prices range from $120 up to $230 depending on the storage and RAM configuration. But on paper, this looks like a really interesting mini PC. It's capable of 4K out, it's got full HDMI, it also has USB Type-C, which does support 4K, 60 out of there, so we've got two displays. It also has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and believe it or not, it does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Like I mentioned, the price on the M6 can vary quite a bit depending on what manufacturer you pick it up from, but I've got one of the cheaper ones here. This is a non-branded unit with 8GB of RAM. You can get up to 16. Inside of the box, you're going to get a 24-watt wall charger. This is powered over USB Type-C. We've got some mounting hardware, and they also include a 6-foot HDMI cable. Another option that I've seen online with these is Windows 10 or Windows 11. I opted for the Windows 11 version, so it is pre-installed. And since it's just an x86 mini PC, you could always install Linux on it if you wanted to. Overall, very small form factor, really liking this. It is actively cooled, so there's a small fan in here, but I wanted to give you a look at this compared to an Xbox controller, just to show you how small this thing really is. Got that single vent up top, which is going to pull that fresh air in. It's going to come out of one of the side ports, and just taking a look inside, it does have a copper heat sink. Not much going on with the sides in the front. Obviously, we've got that power button and an LED indicator, but when we move around back, you'll see we get three USB 3.1 ports. We've got full-size HDMI, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, USB Type-C, this will supply data and video out, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and another USB Type-C port, which is only used for powering the unit up. Before we move over to the specs and test this thing out, I did want to do a quick disassembly. And pulling the bottom off with a single screw reveals two M.2 slots. This one here came pre-installed with a 128GB M.2 SSD, but we also have another 80mm slot, and this is NVMe. So you can upgrade the storage on this very easily. Unfortunately, that's about all we're going to be able to upgrade with this mini PC because the RAM is soldered to the board. I opted for the 8GB version, but they do sell one with 16GB pre-installed. I was kind of hoping to see a couple slots in here, but uh, it's definitely soldered. It's using LP DDR4. And as you can see, we've got a copper heatsink here with a blower style fan. And when it comes to the CPU this is using, it only pulls up to around 16 watts at full boat when you're using the iGPU and the CPU side of things. The CPU itself is rated at 10 watts. And speaking of the CPU, this is powered by an Intel N5105. We've got four cores, four threads, base clock of 2 GHz with the turbo up to 2.9. You can get this with 8 to 16 GB of RAM. It's using LPDDR4 at 2,933 MHz. We've got built-in Intel UHD graphics, but this is definitely upgraded from the older Gemini Lake CPUs that you'd see in these mini PCs because we have 24 execution units and this will run up to 800 MHz. Storage is handled by an M.2 SSD or an NVMe SSD. You can pick this up as a bare bones, no storage option, or you can go all the way up to one terabyte. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. You can run Windows 10, Windows 11, or Linux. This one has Windows 11 pre-installed. All right, so here it is. Got everything set up. I've updated all of the drivers. Everything went really smooth. Uh, it's pretty snappy for what we're working with here. I mean, this is a 10 watt CPU. We've only got four cores and four threads, those built in UHD graphics. And one thing that I noticed, which was a little disappointing, is the RAM in this is running in single channel mode. With iGPUs, dual channel is definitely the way to go. It is running at 2,933 megahertz, and I suspect that the 16 gigabyte model may be running in dual channel. So we will lose a little bit of GPU performance, but what I've tested so far is actually working out pretty well. When it comes to a mini PC like this, it's far from a gaming machine, but we're definitely going to test out some games on this. Checking out some web browsing, everything loads up really quickly. We've got that Wi-Fi 6, and I made sure it was Wi-Fi 6 from the device manager and hardware info, because in the past, I've picked up these mini PCs that state they have Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 5, and it's far from it. But with this one here, we do have an Intel Wi-Fi 6 chip soldered to the board. It's non-user replaceable. And using something like this for web browsing, email checking, you want to do some document editing, it's going to be fine. I mean, this little mini PC can definitely handle those tasks. And it's actually really awesome to see these lower end Intel chips getting a nice little upgrade. So with the N5105, 
in my experience, it's a huge upgrade from the older Gemini Lake 4125s or even the 4105s, especially in the GPU department because we've got 24 execution units instead of 12 to 16 with those other ones. And even though the RAM in this is running in single channel, it'll outperform those older Gemini Lake chips. And as for 4K video playback, these little Jasper Lake chips do a really great job. I'm streaming a 4K 60fps video from YouTube right now. Stats for Nerds is up in the top left hand corner. Let's go ahead and take a look at how many frames have dropped, if any at all. And it does look like we're getting a few drop frames here and there. I would never notice this just playing a 4K video from YouTube without Stats for Nerds on. About five of these are from the initial load in but we are still getting a few here and there. Overall, it's really not that bad. Next thing I want to take a look at are a couple benchmarks I ran, then we'll move over to some gaming and emulation. Here we have Geekbench 5. We got a single core score of 614, multi 1944. Obviously, these are lower scores when you compare them to higher end chips, but for something pulling around 10 watts, it's not that bad. I also ran 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan GPU benchmark, 2,396. And finally, we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a 3,252. This little PC isn't going to win any GPU benchmark awards, but I still want to see how it performs with PC gaming and emulation. Given that we're working with such a low-powered PC, I figured we'd throw some lighter games at it. This is far from a AAA gaming PC, but when it comes to the low-end stuff, you're going to have a really good experience. Here's Cuphead at 900p. There's no settings that we can really change for graphics, but it's running at 60. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, not bad at all. A game I always love to test on these mini PCs is Skyrim. This is the original version. We're at low settings, 720p, and it runs at 60. This is actually really surprising because Gemini Lake really struggled with this, but when it comes to these new Jasper Lake chips, especially the N6000 and the N5105, which we have in here, work really well with these older titles. You want to do some Half-Life, Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead, even original Skyrim. Dual channel will help out with this integrated GPU. So there's a chance if the 16 gigabyte version is running in dual channel, you'll get a little better performance out of it. Before we move over to emulation, there was one last thing I wanted to test. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, but it's not running natively on this mini PC. I'm using Xbox Game Streaming. And by the way, I'm connected over Wi-Fi with that Wi-Fi 6 built-in. It does a good job, but I would recommend using Ethernet when it comes to game streaming, whether you want to do Stadia, GeForce Now, or even this. But it does work on the mini PC quite well. Taking a look at some emulation on the M6, first up we have PSP using PPSSPP, we're at 3x resolution and I'm using the Vulcan back in. It's kind of odd because I did try DirectX 11 at first with this chip, and usually on these x86 mini PCs, I usually have much better luck with DirectX 11, but I did have a few dips at 3x, so I swapped over to Vulcan, and we're good to go with PSP emulation. When it comes to PS2, I wouldn't run out and buy one of these specifically for PS2 emulation, but there are a few games that'll work really well. Here we have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 at 720p. Not bad at all, but I tried Gran Turismo. It was only running at about 48 FPS, even with a ton of hacks on. And I did try the development version with Vulcan, but DirectX 11 worked much better with PS2 on the system. And finally, we have the Dolphin Emulator for some GameCube. Here's my go-to test. This is Automotalista, especially up here in these corners. These mini PCs or low-end ARM chips do dip down a lot, but we're at a steady 60. Now I'm at the native resolution. I'm using the DirectX 11 back in, but it really does perform well with GameCube emulation. When I test out these mini PCs, I always like to take a look at total system power consumption. So while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall. This idles around 5 watts. While gaming, it pulls around 12.4 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out all four cores and the GPU 
was 14.6 watts. And given the power consumption and the performance we got out of this little machine, I think it's doing a really good job. It's far from a AAA gaming machine, but for the form factor and power consumption, I think this is a great little desktop replacement. If you need something for light gaming, light emulation, web browsing, document editing, then the M6 might be a good choice for you. Now there's a couple more operating systems that I'd like to test on this. We're definitely going to be doing a video on Linux running on this little machine. And I'd also like to do just a dedicated emulation operating system like Botocera to see if it would be worth picking something like this up and turning it into a dedicated emulation system. And the way it's going right now with the availability and the pricing of the Raspberry Pi 4, this could be a really great option. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the M6, I will leave a couple links in the description. And definitely stay tuned to the channel because I'll have a couple more videos coming up with this mini PC. And like always, thanks for watching.